Yeah, so it's a little dependent, so it's a little dependent on the dog's temperament and what your goals are for the dog, right? So again, if my dog is very high drive, super high motivation, I may use lower value rewards for all the initial training because I don't need this much energy for the beginning stuff, right? And by doing that, it preserves the value of the higher value things when I switch to them later. When I do need them to put in more effort and I turn up the volume on the rewards, the dogs are like, oh man, I'm getting kibble all the time and now you've got steak? Okay, right? And so because they're, I can effectively work them. So the dog's temperament dictates it to some degree. The other thing is your goals for the dog, right? So if I'm gonna have a working dog, I need higher levels of motivation. So I may try and be trying to make a higher state of arousal around training in general with me right from the beginning, right? I may want that dog more cranked up right off the bat because our general way of approaching tra training and behavior creation is teach at a lower state of arousal and then crank up the volume when the dog starts to understand. And most dogs do really well with that. Some dogs get stuck in the lower state of arousal, and when you try to turn up the volume, they don't come along, right? And so, as a result, if I know I'm gonna do some discipline where I'm gonna need a huge amount of motivation, like a detection dog or something like that, then, or a, a, like a, a, a very difficult search dog, I make, make the initial training sessions with very high intensity rewards, because I want the dog to be very motivated for training in general. So the discipline, to some degree, will drive it. And then the other thing is the behavior. So I may say, hey, when I'm working on place bed work in my living room, I use low value rewards because I don't want my dog super cranked up. I want them to figure out what it is I'm asking of them, but I don't want them like this in my living room. So crate and those kinds of things, I may just say like, let's use lower value rewards here. It's enough to get you to do it, but I don't want you all hyped over that. And so I may pattern certain types of value of reward to certain exercises as well. So like with my puppies, when I do, we're gonna talk restrained recalls here. When I do restrained recalls, I use super high value rewards right from the beginning. So this is one of those places, like I'll take raw food patties and I'll break them up and I'll feed them out, right out of my hand with that stuff. And the only time they get it is when I'm imprinting my initial recalls. And so they're berserk for this stuff, you know, they're like trying to rip your fingers off, right? And I begin right away to pattern the recall, means big deal, huge rewards, right? And so I may take a specific exercise that I know I want the dog to be super enthusiastic about and always use the best stuff possible for that exercise in the, uh, right from the beginning, and another exercise I may not, right? Most of the dogs, like the working type dogs that we keep, I don't have to worry, I use food to teach everything. And then once the dog knows it, then I switch to a toy and that turns up the volume, right? So you choose a type of dog that really likes to play. I've spent my time teaching them how to play. And then once they get it, I switch to very high value rewards, which is a toy. And then everything, they know what's to, to be expected. So I have all the precision of having taught it correctly with food. And then we switch, but not every dog's gonna be like that. And not everybody would want that, right? So the way my dog's demeanor when they're working may not be everybody's cup of tea. You talk to a lot of pet dog, pet dog owners and, and companion dog people and they're like, your dogs stare at you all the time. That would drive me crazy. I hate it. Why don't you just go away and be a dog, right? And so th there are certain things that don't bother me at all. I think it's great. Like if I don't want you to staring at me, I either tell you to go lay down or I just ignore you. It's, it doesn't bother me. It's like same kind of thing with begging, right? My dog stares at me when I eat. Yeah, come to my house, you'll be really unhappy. <laughs> like, uh, I feed all the dogs from my plate, I throw food to them, they're, if you grab a set of plate, they won't take it from you, but they're gonna all line up and sit in front of you and stare at you like, come on, give it up, dude. It doesn't bother me at all. I let them lick my plate when I'm done, I throw food across the room to them, like, it doesn't bug me at all, right? And so, for that kind of thing, if it bothers you, don't reinforce it. Like, it's really easy to get them not to do it, just don't give them anything, right? And if you, if you, don't care, then you don't care. So there'll be those kinds of personal things that people don't care about, right?